Hi and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be looking at editing CSV files in PowerShell, uh, like adding a column or editing data in a cell of a CSV file. This was actually a video request. So let's go ahead and let's get started on this here. So I actually already have a CSV file generated uh, that I've used the convert CSV website for. Um, so here it is, uh, it's just called names. And if I open this here in notepad, we will see uh, that it just has like a sequential number, first and last name. So what we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna be going through the first and last name and we're gonna be adding a column. Um, the first column we're gonna be adding is gonna be a computed column. So basically we're gonna be taking um, something from the other uh, columns and computing them together to make another column. And then we're actually just gonna be adding another column with just like a true value. So it's gonna be like a done column. And we're just gonna set the done to true. We can also implement logic to set that to false. Uh, but it's just to give you two different examples of how to add columns to um, a CSV file. And then we're also gonna be looking at how to change um, values in the CSV file as well. So let's go ahead and let's get started here. So I already have my PowerShell window open and let me just grab the path to this file here. So what I like to do, uh, kind of like what we did in the Selenium files, uh, which I didn't cover in the actual tutorials, uh, we just kind of reference the path directly. Either way really works. Uh, this just makes it easier because we're gonna be outputting uh, to the same folder uh, location as the input file. So what I like to do is I just like to do a script root and we're just gonna put that in there. And then we're gonna put input data, which is going to be our input file path which is actually then going to be script root names dot CSV. And then we're gonna have a output path as well. Uh, so let's do output file path. And we are gonna set this to uh, script root and we're gonna do names dash output dot CSV. All right, so we have our script root file, which references our uh, folder, which this file is in, and then we specify the actual file, and then we specify a output file path. Because we're not gonna wanna overwrite our actual input data. Um, it's definitely best to always keep your data safe from any modifications. This way, if anything goes awry, you still have the original data. All right, and now what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to do a for each here. Actually, first we're gonna to wanna to import the data. So let's do names equals import CSV. And then we're gonna specify a path and we're gonna do that as our input file path. Our delimiter is a comma in this case, so I didn't really have to put this, but this just adds a little bit more um, if someone reads it, they know exactly what the delimiter is expected and they can change that. And let's do our encoding as default here. Now let's do a for each name in names here. And we are just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna put name here for now. And we are just gonna make sure that this works. So let's go ahead and let's run this script here. So here we have all the data with all the names and the sequent number here. So that is perfect. So what we wanna do first is we wanna add a column called full name. So we're gonna be adding the first and the last name. And the way that we're gonna be doing it is we're gonna do it last name comma first name. So let's go ahead and let's create a variable called full name equals, now this, you've already seen this in my other videos. Let's just do last, and then we're gonna do a comma, 
and then we're going to put name dot first. Now we don't actually need to store this in a variable. We could do it all in one line in the next line that I go over. Uh, but this way, it's just easier to kind of see what's going on. It's a lot easier to read. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do a add member. And we're going to want to put the input object as name. And then we're going to put member type as a note property. And then for the name, we are going to want to put that as full name and the value. We are going to put that as full name here. Now what we can do is if we look at names, and then we do export CSV path, and then we put in our file path, our output file path, our delimiter, which is going to be a comma, and then a no type information. And let's run this whole script here. And let's see what our file looks like. So we have our output file here. And if we go into open with and we go into notepad, we actually do see that we actually do have the column of full name. And we can actually see our full name here, which is um, Vasquez, Virginia. Um, so probably the comma wasn't really a very good idea, um, but it's inside the quotes. Uh, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, but what we could do in this case is let's take out the comma. Let's put the first name in front of the last name, a little bit more traditional there. And uh, let's just close this. And let's run this again here. Let's look at it now. It should be a little bit easier. There you go. So we have uh, first, last, Virginia Vasquez, and then full name, Virginia Vasquez as well. All these names are false. They were just generated from a computer here. So if your name is on here, it's purely coincidental. Um, so that's how you would add a column computed based on the last two columns. Now, let's say you had a, you wanted to do a operation. So what you could do is you could do um, some API or database call. And then based on the result of that, what you would do is you would have like an if statement. Uh, we're not going to do an if statement because we're not doing an API or database call or anything like that. But then what you would do is you would do add member input object. And the, the reason why this works is because we have our import CSV here into names, what this does is it creates a array of all the different um, all the different objects. Each line in a CSV then becomes a object inside of this array. And then what we're doing with the for each is we're grabbing each object in that array and we're treating it as its own object. So what we do here is we're adding a member and we're putting in the object that we want, which is the current row. And what we're doing is we're adding a property of full name. So we're actually adding another column because each column is a property. So that's kind of how this works. Now you could do it um, in a way of you're doing a for each, you grab all of the data from the CSV file. And before this, you would create like an array list up here. So you would uh, create, oops, give me one second here. I think I duplicated some stuff here. So give me two, there you go. So here you would do create array list. And then what you would do is you would loop through all the CSV data and you would rip that CSV data and create another object and then add that object into the array list. That becomes a little bit less efficient um, if all you're doing is simply adding a column, which was the request was really just to know how to add a column. Um, so I wouldn't recommend it that way. If you're just simply adding a column, I would just do it this way. Um, but know that there are other ways of doing it, especially if you want a little bit more logic behind it or depending on what you want to do um, with the data. 
um, but most of the time this method will uh, will be sufficient and actually will be much more efficient than creating a new array list and creating a whole bunch of new objects and adding those objects to the array list because that becomes a lot of operations. Uh, so we're going to be adding a member here and we're going to put name and we're going to say uh, done and we are going to give it a value of true here and that should be it so if we go ahead and we run this hopefully because i had the file open it should still have overwritten it but let's see yes so here we have now we have our five rows we have the full name and we have the done row and we have all of our values as true so what we're going to do is we actually want to change. Now this would be more so if you wanted to change like every value in a row. Um, this isn't going to be super, super useful um, for your everyday scripts. Um, but I wanted to show this just so you guys know that it is possible. Now, let's say we wanted to change everybody's last name to Smith. What you would do is you would do name dot last equals Smith, and this will actually change it. So if we run this here, we will actually see in the output file that everybody's name is now Smith, and even it affected the full name because I did it before the full name value was calculated. If you did it after, their last names would still be using their original last names. Um, so if we actually just change the position of this to here, so just to show you guys once more what it looks like before I run it. So here we have everybody's last name as Smith, and in their full name, it also references Smith as well. So let's go ahead and with the uh, code change here of changing the last name afterwards, if we run this here and we go into open with and we go into PowerShell. All right, so let me just zoom in here. So here we have all the last names have changed to Smith, but their full names still have their original last names. So the order of operations in this case really does matter. Um, so make sure that if you do any edits um, and if you do something like a pre-calculated value, if we had done this all in one line of the add member, we wouldn't have this potential problem. Um, but in our case, uh, because we have this calculated value, if we want the last name here to be the new last name, we have to make sure to always do that before. And that is pretty much how you add uh, columns to a CSV file through PowerShell and edit uh, entire columns through PowerShell. Now, what you could do if you knew that specifically, like you had a bunch of last names that needed to be changed, uh, you could add an if statement that will only change specific names. If you know the ID number, you could do an if uh, dollar sign name dot sequent is equal to five and then change the name dot last on that specific one. It gives you a lot of flexibility here, um, but this is the base script for how you would modify CSV files. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any other requests, definitely feel free to comment down below and I will always uh, look at them. If I know how to do it, I'll do it right away. If I have to learn something, I will go ahead and read and learn something and try to show you guys to the best of my ability. But please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you on the next video.